Point two, in the military, there's a, a clear sign when a change of command occurs. The outgoing commander grabs a flag and hands it over to the incoming commander. And when that occurs, the mission changes from the outgoing commander to the incoming commander. And the incoming commander is responsible for all his unit does or fails to do. I think there's a lesson to be learned here uh, that there's, there's going to be a time when this administration is going to have to accept some responsibility, maybe not all, but at least a smidgen, a little bit, they're going to have to say, yeah, this did happen on our watch. Yeah, we didn't really reorganize MMS when we first got in. Yeah, it took the disaster for us to do that. Yeah, maybe we were too slow to deploy assets. Uh, I think it would help in, a, in really a bipartisan manner that they accept a, a little bit. In the military, it happens day one. And as a commander in chief, you would think he would, he would learn that. I'll focus on a lot of things today, but in my remaining time, I just want to highlight three things. I, I'm an avid Facebook guy, and I mentioned uh, the moratorium and, the, and rigs being moved, and one of my opponents put on there, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, Diamond Offshore Drilling Incorporated announces relocation of deep water ocean confidence to the Congo. Three deep water drilling rigs to be moved from sites south of Cameron Parish. Brazil sees silver lining in BP spill. More rigs. If we don't move carefully on this, uh, we're going to increase our reliance on important Thank you, Mr. Drills. Chairman. Again, appreciate you all, all coming. And, uh, I mean, you know, my opening statements, I, you know, I talked about command changes and uh, taking responsibility. Uh, the first question is, when you were both sec sitting secretaries, do you remember a hearing where the previous secretaries of going back to uh, the Clinton administration were asked to testify on the same day that you were testifying? That Certainly Secretary Norton not. ever happened? It, no. no, that did yeah. not. Secretary no, sir. Thorne, thank you. Um, you know, my good friend from Illinois, Congressman LaHood, Secretary of Transportation now. I don't think he's had any testimony uh, coming up here where he's had Secretary Peters or Secretary Menez. So uh, it's it just uh, interesting that, uh, uh, that we're, we're doing in this light. But uh, having said that, uh, what I've been, we know it's a catastrophe. We're, we're hoping the cap holds. We're doing the cleanup. BP should be held responsible. I think we're all in, you know, on that message and, and focused on helping, you know, the Gulf Coast states recover. And the issue is, um, how do we decrease our reliance on imported crude oil? And I think Secretary Norton, you kind of talked about the change after September 11th, understanding that we really have to get away. And I'm an all the above energy guy, nuclear, solar, wind, coal to liquid. OCS expansion. In fact, I did mention in my opening statement President Obama talking about a new green, uh, moving on a, a carbon bill would include opening up more OCS. I mean, that was a week before uh, this disaster happened. So the, do you think, and I, I rely a lot on my, my friend and colleague and roommate Steve Scalise on some uh, information on Gulf issues. Is a moratorium an, a, an appropriate response stopping uh, operating wells that are, you know, op operating in line right now? Is, is that an appropriate response? I understand doing research on the disaster, but a moratorium, Secretary Norton? In my mind, to go back to my aircraft analogy, you don't ground all of the airplanes because there was one problem. You have to look, and as they did, do a, a complete up and down inspection of the existing rigs and make sure that that problem doesn't exist. There might be other steps that should have been taken. Maybe they were and maybe they weren't. But the important thing is to address the issues, not send the drilling rigs overseas where they may not return for many years and not send the jobs to other countries in order to resolve the issue. Secretary Kempthorne? Yes. Congressman, I believe that the action that was taken, which was a safety review immediately after, 
where they looked at, <clears throat> in the deep water, some 30 different drill rigs. After that review, I think there was only one area of noncompliance. Everything else was being adhered to with regard to the regulations that are on the books. That was appropriate. The Gulf Coast is being devastated, and all of us are for safety. But I believe, Congressman, that the, the result, if a moratorium is put in place, is the only absolute is that you will further cause disruption to the economy of the Gulf Coast states when really they need to have an opportunity for recovery. And just let me, uh, I'll end on this. You know, you know, in my opening statement, I talked about the Diamond Offshore announced Friday. It's an Ocean Endeavor drilling rig was moving. This was July 9th. I have Brazil sees silver lining, more rigs, uh, three deep water drilling rigs to be moved from sites south of Cameron Parish. Well, if they are in the process of moving, and some are, do they come back? Secretary Norton. In my experience, those are long-term contracts. And once they are moved, once you go through the trouble and expense of moving them away, then they tend to stay in those locations. And so it's going to be very hard for that industry to be rebuilt. Secretary Kempthorne. Um, I agree with that statement, Congressman. In the big picture, how far are we away from having another situation that may see us at $4 a gallon gasoline? We are too reliant upon foreign sources of our energy. We are too reliant. And so if we now pursue a policy that continues to diminish our own development here within our own shores, on our own land, I do not think it bodes well for the country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I want, I want to thank you for being here. And I appreciate your, your candor and say, hey, there's enough blame to go around for all of us. I think the deep sea modeling uh, issue is just another one that a lot of us let slip by, things that we could have done. Um, and so I think it's important that, that we look at the problem, try to resolve the problem, make BP pay, and, 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 and move forward. Um, this is historical in my 14 years having uh, a sitting secretary and two previous secretaries in one in one day and as I noted earlier it's I've not seen that ever done uh, I've never seen a secretary of energy brought before and then the previous secretaries of energy brought on the same day I've never it's, so it's it, it is what it is uh, so we we welcome you here you mentioned uh, first of all for electricity generation in this country are we independent are we as a nation, for the most part, independent on our energy needs for electricity generation? I can help you. I know you're not in the energy. The answer is yes. So when we talk about energy needs of this country, I like to break it up into electricity generation and liquid fuels for transportation needs and the like. You made a comment in your opening statement about the the huge amounts of energy that will be able to be recovered by wind in the Atlantic coast. Can you define huge for me? And this has got to be electricity generation because okay. we don't make transportation fuel out of wind. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what huge is. The uh, formal evaluation, as I recall, from the National Renewable Energy Lab is that there is about thousand uh, megawatts uh, of power available now there is a but that's intermittent right it's not it's not you can't totally uh, rely upon me, that for base load generation let me, uh, congressman answer your, your your question there there is a connect between how we use electricity and how we consume oil and uh, this president uh, has been uh, working for a long time. Okay, I, let, reclaiming my time, I, I really am short and I want to stay true well, to me, the five minutes. So let, me just, let me just say that. Chairman, I would just like to make my point. It, let me answer my question. Would you let him answer and we'll No, do I've got like three minutes. more questions I need to go to. So I, I get but the point. Me, my point is there's okay. electricity and liquid fuel. It, uh, it is my time. I'll answer my question in if, two words. Okay. Electricity and transportation are tied together. Maybe in the, the new world, but it isn't today. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what real power is. 1,600 megawatts by, two, by a coal-fired power plant being built, that's the equivalent of 624 wind generators. The 624 wind generators would take 30,000 acres of land to, to in place. So uh, we just got to keep this. There's not huge. 
Huge is nuclear. Huge is coal. Renewable is helpful. But to, to, to sell the story that it is the salvation of our energy needs is really doing a great disservice to this, to this country. Uh, let me move on to um, the, uh, the moratorium. The, um, if, if there's 33 rigs idle right now. If I said that that's 45,000 jobs and equivalent jobs, would that be close? Yeah, there have uh, been different numbers that I have seen from uh, 30,000 experts. There are thousands of jobs. Uh, if I said a loss of $330 million in payroll, would that be close? I haven't seen the number in dollars. Uh, $2 billion in, in tr uh, royalties to the Federal Treasury is lost. Would that be close? There's no doubt the moratorium has an economic impact. Okay. The last question, and I do it respectful too, but this moratorium is killing me and it, it's killing jobs in a place that needs jobs. The, uh, when you put your hand on the pause button, is business planning and decision making pausing? I'll give you an example. In my opening statement, I talked about uh, a release yesterday. Uh, first rig sails away over drilling ban. Uh, Diamond Offshore announced Friday that its Ocean Endeavor drilling rig will leave the Gulf of Mexico and move to Egyptian waters immediately, making it the first to abandon the United States in the wake of BP oil spill and a ban on deep water drilling. That is in the time when we need jobs in the economy and energies report, we pray that you have, you have some concern about the jobs of this country and of Louisiana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.